What's up, Pirate Nation? I'm your host, David Heim, and welcome to a very special edition of Hall Talk. Tonight we'll preview the men's basketball season, and we'll talk about what the Pirates are going to need to do this season in order to take that giant leap forward from last season. We'll also discuss the importance of leadership and depth on this team. I have five analysts with me this evening to help me out. Now, last year, the Seton Hall Pirates finished 15-18. and 18. They were second to last in the Big East, just decimated with injuries. They lost to Syracuse in the second round of the Big East tournament. It was a close game, but the depth that they didn't have was eventually what led them to exiting the Big East tournament. They often had six or seven guys available, scholarship players at one night, which, if you're going to agree with me, is, is not going to lead to success at all for the Pirates. This year, in the new era, in the new Big East, they find players like Sterling Gibbs, Jaron Cena, Stefan Manga, and Hakeem Harris to come with the consistencies of guys like Fuquan Edwin. Fuquan Edwin averaged 16.5 points per game for the Pirates last season, and if he can come any close to that again this year with the new faces the Pirates have, it, should, it could be a pretty successful season for the Pirates. We're going to take a quick break. When I return, I'm going to be joined with Jacqueline Cardini and George Balecki. This is Hall Talk. Welcome back to Hall Talk. I have my first two analysts with me this evening, Jacqueline Cardini and George Belecci. Guys, how are you doing this evening? Doing good. Thanks good. for having me. Thanks. David. It's a big season coming up for the Pirates. It's, it's the new Big East. It's, it's the turn of the page from last year. Guys, how important is it that Fuquan Edwin leads this team? And I'll start with you, Jacqueline. His leadership, how vital is that going to be for the Pirates? I mean, we know last year he was the lead scorer. He was an important rebounder, had a couple steals, averaged a game. But the thing is, if this team is going to be a surprise factor in the Big East tournament, it's really going to be on his shoulders. Not only as the lead scorer for the team, but also as a leader on this team. We have a young team. We have Jaron Sino, who's a freshman. We also have uh, Sterling Gibbs, who's, who's coming in off sitting out last year, who played only a year at, at Texas. So we really need that, that leadership in Fuquan to be able to make all this team be able to score, produce, have those big wins, and like we really need it. So. George? Um, I see Fuquan coming to this year being big. Uh, last year after the season, he was named Honorable Mention All Big East. He was also named All Metropolitan. Now, preseason, I was reading yesterday, he was named Second Team All Big East. And he was seventh in the Big East last year, averaging 16.6 .6 points per game. As we all know, he was a leading scorer. He was a leading defender. And he comes into this season with 218 steals on his career. The all-time record at Seton Hall is held by Dan Caladrino from uh, 1979 to 1982. He recorded so he's 260. Close. He's close. Yeah, he's well within re He's going to get it. Face it, he's going to get that. He's going to break that record, and he knows that he's knocking on the door. Um, so he's going to be leading us defensively, offensively, and like she said before, with Sterling and Jaron Cena coming in, the importance of him is his, through his actions leading this team. And we're going to need him to be able to settle down the young Jaron Cena, who's only a, he's a true freshman that will be playing the point guard, and Sterling, who first time playing ball since his freshman year when he was at Texas. So he's really going to lead this team, especially with a healthy Brandon Mobley and a healthy Patrick Aldo. Now, it's, it's almost kind of a dig to Fuquan Edwin, best player on the Pirates, uh, one of the best players in the Big East, you know, led the conference in steals two years ago, uh, was just up there again last year, uh, led the nation in steals two years ago, uh, what he can do scoring and defensively and to get a mention and, and to be on the you know, second Big East team, it's almost kind of a dick to him, we'll see if he uses that as, as, some, fi as some fire uh, and to fuel him this year. But my next point, like you, you mentioned about him guiding Sterling Gibbs and Jaron Cena. It's a, it's, a, it's a relatively young team. And, and whether young in age or, or young in experience, there's a lot of new guys to this Pirates basketball team. How important is it that they look up to Fuquan Edwin, you know, vice versa, not only him leading, but them taking his leadership on? Well, personally, I think it's really important. And not only is Jaron Cena new, we also have uh, Stefan Manga a lot of uh, transfers and we need that consistency out of Fuquan um, because we can't just depend on Fuquan to be the only person to be the one to make these big plays, make the rebounds. You also need to um, even Teague also to like take a role in leadership there, leading these guys like as they're, they're the big scorers, big rebounders, but the other players need to look up to them 
or they're not going to have the seasons that Fuquan has, quite now, frankly. George, I'm going to ask you a different question. Who is your player to watch this year for the Pirates? It, whether it be Fuquan, who's your player that, that, that needs to step up for the Pirates that, that you're looking to have a big year? When I was looking at the season last year and I was looking at how we played against top 25 teams, seeing how we finished 0-7. Teams ranked from 26 to 50 in the nation, 0-4. And, and look at the games where we were playing Marquette, Georgetown, Syracuse, Villanova, all top 25 teams at the time. And a lot of the time, uh, Fuquan would fall off and he wouldn't score that much. Right. And who would either be second in scoring or leading the team in scoring in Fuquan's place was Aaron Cosby. And as we know, he transferred. No so here. who do I have as my player to watch is Sterling Gibbs, who's stepping in. And he can score. He can ball flat out. The kid can We ball. saw that in the exhibition on Saturday. Exactly. He can play the two very well, especially feeding off how much uh, defensive pressure Fuqua will be taking off of him. So I have Sterling Gibbs. He has to step in because even the limited time he played at Texas, he still shot 47% from the field. He was hitting 41% from the three-point line. And when he was in high school, he was six points away from scoring 2,000 points. So you know the kid could score. Now, we obviously need that other outlet. Now, as much weight as Eugene Teague has lost, as good of a shape as he's in, he's still not the best, second best scorer on the floor. So I, my big player to watch is definitely Sterling Gibbs. Where he needs you, to step up. Where do you see this team finishing? Uh, i say in the area of 25 wins this year. Okay. 10 more wins than they had last season. And honestly, because it's their out-of-conference schedule is very easy. They won't get a true test until around November 23rd when they're in the Coaches vs. Cancer Tournament. Oklahoma. They're either, they're either, yeah, Oklahoma, Michigan State, right. or Virginia Tech, they'll all be playing. At Michigan State, they went deep into the big dance. Now, and you'll see the, the rest of their season, it'll be a cakewalk until January 4th comes along, and then we host Creighton and Doug mm -hmm. McDermott, who was actually named the preseason biggest MVP. So I see us with 25 wins, and that's honestly because of the easiness of our mid-season uh, schedule. And obviously, I see a splitting series with Villanova, Marquette, Georgetown, Creighton, all of them. Jacqueline? I totally agree. I think that um, I was reading an article online, and out of all the Big East teams, we had the ranked easiest schedule. It was 2 out of 10 points for toughness, and that's because the coaches for ca uh, cancer tournament is going to be our hardest uh, tournament this year and other than that we look like we have a pretty easy season compared to the rest of the Big East so hopefully we can capitalize on that though but um, my player to watch this year would definitely be Jared Cena because right. I mean we didn't have a point at all last year I mean we did we did see some uh, leadership on the ball within Tom Mayan but I really didn't see the uh, that main point guard leadership and in anybody and I think that uh, although I feel Jared Cena will definitely feel the pressure this year to perform and won't be able to perform in the beginning of the season, I think he's really going to come out and be able to, he, he's a good player when it comes to dishing out the ball and um, great ball handler, so we'll see what he has to do. We'll see what stuff. happens. They're definitely going to have to take advantage of that non-conference schedule. We're going to take a quick break. When we return, I'm going to be joined by my three other analysts, Vince Paolilla, John Fanta, and Ryan Flannery. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Hall Talk. Welcome back to Hall Talk. I'm joined now with my three other analysts for this evening, Vince Paolilla, Ryan Flannery, and John Fanta. Guys, thanks for joining me this evening. Thank you, sir. Now, another major storyline for the Pirates this year is depth. Last year, there was absolutely no depth on this team. And this year, it seems like there's a newfound depth. There's uh, more bodies to come out on the floor and, and make plays. I've been talking to other guys like Brian Oliver, Pat Auda, Gene Teague, and all of them have, have said pretty much the same thing, that... It's, it's refreshing to, to, to have guys that can come and back them up. I know guys like Brian Oliver was slid into the four, the three, the two last year. Positions, you know, he's not fully comfortable with. He was all over the place. So for guys like him, how important is the depth? And I'll start with you, John. How important is the depth for this team? Coach Willard said in the media day, he goes, this has been a long time coming. It's increased the competition in the preseason practices. It, it now allows you, instead of at one point last year, guys, having like six, six guys, guys that you yeah. can go to. Now you, you've got guys throughout the second and third quarters especially that you can go to, whether it's Harold's Carlos or, or on top of that, uh, Auda. You now have guys throughout the game that have grit. Then you can find a good rotation for the final stretch. So many times last year they had a lead going in the final ten minutes. They were all set to go, right. and they ran out of gas. Now for a guy like especially Gene Teague, who several times – Tired as the game went on, now he can be ready for that final stretch, and the Hall can play their best basketball when it matters most. All right, we saw that in the Big East tournament against Syracuse last year, tied at halftime. You know, 
right in the game with 10, 15 minutes left, and then you know once they get winded a little bit and there's not that uh, that depth there and then some reinforcements, that's where you know the better teams came and, and got us for the most part of our games last year. Ryan, well, absolutely, I agree with John. I think the one t the one aspect of this team that you know really improved is definitely the depth, but also I mean the new faces bring you know new challenges, new new chemistry issues, and that's the one thing that I'm concerned about with this team. You know, starting off, you know, we saw against Caldwell. Uh, this weekend that they, they got off to a little bit of a slow start. And to me, that was just like kind of a lack of chemistry. Mm -hmm. But I think they'll develop that as the season goes on. Oh, yeah. um, but to me, the one spot that I'm looking at with depth is the point guard position. Um, of course, you have Gibbs at, at presumably starting at the one. Uh, me and John were talking uh, before the show. We really think that Jaron Cena is not going to be that scoring type that a lot of people think he will be. Uh, I think Jaron Cena will be more of a, of a role player. You know, he's going to shoot his threes. He's going to get his open looks. But... I think that's going to be his role to start off. You know, maybe he might switch into to the score that they need if Fuquan's uh, a little bit rusty, but you never know. Um, but you have Hakeem Harris, um, you know, with Cena. So I, I think, and even uh, Tom Mayan as well. Mm -hmm. And Tom Mayan is, I think, you know, we'll get into breakout players, but he's one of them because I think that, you know, he's going to learn under two guys who know how to play the position. Um, you know, he, he's a little bit raw. You know, defensively he's great. But Well, he uh, could also teach too. You know, he's been here last year, and, and he was trying to learn last year, but now they know this is, you know, he knows the ropes a little bit here. So, exactly. you know, he can teach guys like Harris, and believe it or not, he could teach guys like Gibbs as well. And I believe he was actually in a tough spot as they all were. You think about it, they had no one there. Mm -hmm. Only six guys, like we said, at, down to one of the last games of Marquette. But you still got to look at the team and how they performed last year. Again, Syracuse, who had them that close, that leading, and possibly almost upsetting them. Right. And, you know, so Tom Lyon really didn't have a chance as such a young player to really learn around the whole team and be prepared. This year he does, and now he's got other guys that can take a little bit of pressure off him because he did have a lot of pressure on him last season. But you look at guys like Hakeem Harris and Jared Cena, who are just going to take the ball and run with and attack the basket. And Cena's just going to – it takes him a little rough in the last game, but it was just him trying to get into a groove. He was a little nervous as, you know, around all the fans everything else, and he was trying to perform. But other than that, you, it's really exciting this year because you have a ton of guys that just want to get out there and score. Mm. And that if they're struggling on offense, they pick it right up with defense. I know we all talked about it. Aldo, you know, the first game back, he was a little rough on it, shooting the ball – but his defense was on point all night long. Well, John mentioned it before. You know, he said that a, a big key to this team was they had so many leads, especially in Big East play, because I think the non-conference schedule besides the, the coaches' classic, I mean, they're going to roll through that. Um, but, you know, Big East is the key this year, I mean, without a doubt, with the round-robin style. So mm -hmm. they can't have a lead going into halftime or be tied and then give it up because right. that is where the depth comes into play because they just look tired and gassed. Well, I think now that having the depth, you know, it'll be, it won't be as easy to do so. Right. You know, I think they'll have the reinforcements there. Uh, they'll be able to finish games more. There's going to be guys that are going to come in with fresh legs, which, you know, having fresh legs, playing against teams like Mar Marquette and Georgetown is going to be huge, especially on the road. And you have motivation. You have a fresh attitude. And we can talk about talent on paper all we want, but let's be honest. Last year, there was a lot that was going on off the court behind the scenes with this team. This time, if you want to go ahead and pull any type of, of those actions, guys, mm -hmm. well, there's there, other are, guys guys, there are other guys there. Right. You can take a seat on the bench. Right. Sure. This is much more of a team with a unified attitude mm -hmm. that knows what they yeah. have to do to win because guess what? They experienced the bad part of it last year. And they send it media day, guy by guy, one by one, we heard last year truly stunk. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Well, I talked to Mobley, and you know he said, you know, along with Fuquan and Teague, now that they're seniors, so they have a lot more you know, push with, you know, people are going to listen to them more. And he said, you know, it's like a family now, and that's great to hear that no matter what, win or lose, that they're still going to have each other's backs, they're going to be there for each other, and they're all going to push and fight together. You have guys, and one of the cool things about it is a lot of them from Jersey. Keem mm -hmm. Harris, you've seen it. a lot of them are from here and, you know, talk over and they know, it, they make it more comfortable. You know, Mobley said, you know, he's not from around here, but being with Keem Harris and other guys just and Gibbs made him feel a little bit more at home and made him transition for a great season. So who's your player to watch for this year? Me, I'm actually looking forward to Hakeem Harris. Seeing him in the game on over the weekend, he's another guy just like Sterling Gibbs. You know, Gibbs can ball, you know, like George said earlier, you know, attack the basket, but so can Hakeem Harris. And, John, you, one of your worries that we were talking about was who's going to score off the bench, and he's my guy that I'm definitely saying he's going to really pick the team up when the starting five may not be out there. He's going to attack the basket. He's going to circulate the ball to his teammates and give get guys open like – Alda and Cena. Ryan? 
Well, we haven't talked about him much, guys, but uh, my breakout player or my player to watch is uh, Stefan Manga because I think this guy can flat out jump out mm -hmm. the gym. I mean, we saw it in the dunk competition. Um, I mean, we've seen it multiple times. I mean, this guy is a true athlete. Um, he's built like, I mean, I hate, to, I hate to make the reference, but he's got that like LeBron body type. You know, he can do. <laughs> oh, we hope. He's we, a, know, right, we, we hope. hope. Absolutely. He's hope. under the radar. Yeah. He's under the radar, too. And not a lot of people are talking about him. I, I just think that this guy can really bl uh, bring some athleticism. Um, you know, that defense that they need, and most importantly, rebounding, because he, again, he can jump mm -hmm. extremely high. Um, he's going to provide some great spark, too, to the crowd, and uh, I can't wait to see him dunk. I mean, he's just an athlete. So, so Ryan thinks we might have the next LeBron James series. Hey, I home. hope so. I, I just said his, his body type, <laughs> but that's a good thing. John? I, I've got out of because he has got to break out. This team needs another guy. When, when T takes a seat on the bench, they need somebody that can fire through the lane and be able to get boards down low. That's going to be huge for this team because they need rebounds down there. And, and going back to the overall depth, guys, it, it's not going to be found right away. This team's going to take time to mesh. But at the same time, Seton Hall basketball, with the non-conference schedules that they play, yes, we can criticize it, but we have to understand where Coach Willard's coming from. He wants to get ready for the Big East, he wants to have some issues in non-conference action to sort them out for conference right, play. Right. That's mm -hmm. what you want your non-conference schedule to be because this team isn't going to mesh well all that much right away, but they can certainly grow. And you say Alda, I mean, he's a one guy that, you know, injury last year, that killed him. He wanted to be yeah. out with his teammates, and you could see him in that game. He was itching to get time in and play and shoot the ball. He was a little rough, but he picked it up defensively, and he was loving every moment of it. And I don't see without a doubt that he's going to have a great season. This team has a lot of guys who can do the extra things outside of just score. Mm -hmm. I'm looking to see how they're going to be able to score the basketball, but at the same time, I, I see a lot of good action. One of the more impressive players on, on Saturday for me, I, I'm going to call him the masked man, Harold's Carlos, David. <laughs> I love the way he played. Flew up and down the floor. Right. Good defense. Willard was very happy well, with the defense. Saw, you talked we saw the intensity last year from Harold's Carlos. Real quick, guys. Where does this team finish? It's so hard to pinpoint where they could finish in the conference, what their actual record could be. But in a general standpoint, where does this team finish from they last year? Top eight in the coaches' poll. Right. When at Big East Media Day, I feel like they're going to be a lot higher than that because you don't have those teams like Syracuse in them anymore. Even though you have other great teams coming in, but they can compete with any team out there, especially with their depth and the talent that they have. And that defense, we talk about a lot of guys that could do both, may not score as well, but they play great defense. And that's what I'm excited for. Well, I mean, severely uh, underranked, I think, in the, in the preseason poll. I'm going to go five um, in the Big East just because, again, he made the point that, you know, this team wants to shock people. They're the dark horse in the mm -hmm. league, and they have so many guys who are just focused and ready. And this is Foo's senior season, and, you know, you mentioned it before in our last segment. You know, he's, he felt like he got a little bit digged um, with, with the second team all Big East, and, and he's an NBA prospect. I mean, if he has a great year, you know, I, I've talked about it. He can really um, up his stock. So, right. And again, John mentioned it too, um, to make it quick. There's no distractions. Mm -hmm. the, the, the main focus is winning, and if they take that attitude into the new conference, which is in their favor, I'll, I'll go fifth. I've got 7-11 and 11 in the conference, and my big non-conference moment for this team is I think they could really use that win on November 22nd against Oklahoma <laughs> because then on sure. the 23rd, if you're facing a team like Michigan State, you could get blown away. I don't know what's going to happen, but that may be the best thing that could have happened to you because you know what you have to be to right. be better. Unfortunately, we're all out of time. I'm going to bring Jacqueline and George out here to sign off. For Jacqueline Cardini, George Bellegi, Vince Paolilla, Ryan Flannery, and John Fanta, I'm David Heim. This has been a very special edition of Hall Talk. It all tips off Saturday for the Pirates when they take on Niagara at the Prudential Center. We're going to keep you covered all season long, not just with basketball, but with other Seton Hall athletics as well. So I'm David Heim, your host for this evening. Good night.